there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Today, in the co-captain's chair, Mr. Jamie Laszlo. What's up, Jamie? What's going on, Pete? How you doing? Raining over there yet? Uh, not at the moment, but it has been. Of course, okay, good. folks watching, we're actually talking about last weekend's weather. Because <laughs> that's how it goes here on uh, Sea of Tranquility. We tape these things. They don't always air the same day. But yeah, we had uh, some rain, a little bit oh, of rain yeah. yesterday. It's supposed to rain a lot today and into tomorrow. So I'm hoping because we really need it. But uh, we'll see. Right now, it's not do. It's gloomy, cloudy, but it's not doing anything. So, but it has rained. Uh, in the and that's the weather forecast from a week ago. Yes. Yeah. So for those of you uh, watching, hopefully uh, when this airs, uh, the weather's gorgeous by you, but it's not here in New York a week ago. So today we're going to uh, take a look at the catalog of a really great band from Germany that uh, debuted, oh, 2012, thereabouts. That was when their debut album came out. And they've been consistently releasing some very, very cool albums, kind of in, I guess, if you could describe them, it's kind of like the psychedelic stoner doom sort of a sound uh their most recent album kind of touches on prog and space rock quite a bit but uh they've been one of the shining lights in this style of music for about a decade and uh, it was for me i really like this band a lot but you know, jamie and i were just talking off camera that uh we have so much new music to digest constantly now that i've really enjoyed revisiting this catalog and i was like man how, why haven't I not been listening to this band for the last like year or two or three? Yeah. Because these albums are so good. And I'm like, man, this is shit that I want to be cranking in the car tomorrow, playing at the gym tomorrow. And it's like, why haven't I in recent memory? Because we got too much shit. And the too rotation much. wheel is so big, yeah. cadaver hits, and it takes a while to come back around sometimes. Yeah. And a year or two or three, which is sad because these guys are so good. If you like, huge heavy riffs really cool vocals that fit the music big drums and like i said it's a mix of doom and stoner and psychedelia and space rock it's just it's trippy it's heavy really cool stuff i, I almost don't even know how to compare them or who to compare them with because they do have their own sound but yet we'll probably touch on some things as we're going through the album so we got six albums all told all right, their most recent one came out in 2020. So I'm assuming we'll hear something soon from them in the not too distant future. But they also did that album with Elder called uh, Eldavar, which is right there, uh, which is also really good, which basically the two bands coming together and doing something pretty mind blowing. So uh, there's that as well. So another spacey kind of album. Yeah, yeah. that's a more of a spacey type Moody. of rock thing. Yeah. 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 They, they, you know, this whole psychedelic rock thing is very popular right now. So these bands they used to play like Stoner and Doom now all of a sudden they're discovering all these psychedelic elements and that's bleeding through a lot of them i mean you've got you know king buffalo and earthless and uh my sleeping karma and i mean there's a there's a million other ones all them witches there's so many of these bands that are kind of permeating elder uh that are doing this kind of like psychedelic thing right now and a lot of them their roots lie in the kind of doom and stoner camp but uh it's cool to see this you know really kind of grown in popularity because i think it's a really really cool style of music so with all that being said i'll have jamie kick us off with his number six yeah i love this whole stoner movement that started maybe 18 years ago or so okay. you know, i always compare i know you're not a grunge fan but i was big on grunge in 90 91 92 and i thought that was just a fun time to be listening to music this kind of when this hit about 18 years ago it reminded me of that i got excited about new bands again you know and now that they're all going a little spacey, I'm right on board with that, too. So saying that, coming in at number six for me is uh, Rough Times, 2017. You know, I was a big fan of the band by the time this came out. It, uh, when, But I remember being disappointed going, is the band going through Rough Times? Is that why they named it Rough Times? I don't know. Uh, the, the first song... Uh, rough times it has interesting guitar work and the song is solid enough into the wormhole do me big uh thunderous riffs a bit of a hook but kind of caveman primitive sounding which some, some people might like that more than textures and stuff uh and that's fine skeleton blues it, it's got the cool riffs it's got the cool solos but it's a bit 
lacking in the songwriting department, maybe. But then Die Baby Die comes on. And it's like, here we go. You know, this is this is like a, a proto metal band in 1970 trying to write a radio hit. You know, that probably didn't work, probably didn't get airplay, but they're trying. So yes, Die Baby Die, even the, the title rolls off your tongue. You know, you know that that's going to have a hook to it when you say the title of the song. <clears throat> Vampires, which is a great name. These guys have the best song titles. Oh, they definitely do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so Vampires comes on and I'm listening to this, you know, revisiting this album because I don't listen to it when I grab Cadaver. This isn't the one I listen to first. Um, I'm, I'm thinking this is a great, great song. It's like uh, 60s pop rock mixed with proto metal and it works. And I'm thinking maybe I was too harsh on this album because it's on a roll now. Then you get into Tribulation Nation and if you hear that song. I dare you to say the name of the song without singing it. You can't. It's an earworm. Uh, yeah, that is another great song. But Words of Evil, solid, solid but simple hard rock song. And then here's a bit of the two. Uh, the Lost Child and You Found the Best in Me are these slow, moody pieces a little bit. And it's not the best way to go out. And then you have this last song, uh, German. These guys are from Germany, by the way. Yep. And they sometimes sing in German. Yep. And uh, they have these on a few albums, these fade out songs, you know, slow little, okay, the album's over. I call them the happy trail songs because the happy trails on Diver Down kind of fades the album out. And this is a bit of a happy trail song. And I don't, normally judge an album on those type of songs when they're the last song it, 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 if it sucks i'll forgive it because it's the last song i'm injecting the cd out anyways before it's over but you just did two kind of slower songs and then you're going into the happy trails fade out song ends on a whimper for me so yes a, a few really top-notch songs some mediocre ones some yeah, so it comes in at number six for me and uh, before I start mine, <clears throat> let's talk about who's in the band here. So, uh, again, they all have these kind of fun little names. But uh, Christoph Lindemann, who they call Lupus, is uh, guitar and vocals. He's a founding member of the band. You got uh, Christoph Bartelt, which his little fun name is Tiger. He's a drummer. And then uh, since 2013, we've got Simon Butaloop, otherwise known as Dragon, on bass. So that's the, the, yeah. the game. Pretty formidable. Don't though. let those corny names be off-putting to you, though. Dragon and Tiger. Tiger and Lupus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Little nicknames. So, all right. So for me, um, this was a kind of a hard ranking because I really like these albums quite a bit. It was actually really easy to put my number six, the most recent album, which I've only had for like a couple of weeks. And it's uh, the Isolation Tapes. So this came out in 2020. Uh, this is a completely different style of music from all their other albums. It's almost like, you know, whether the band just wanted to move away from heavy rock into a more kind of psychedelic Pink Floyd crap rock style, whether this is a one off, whether this is what they're going to do going forward. Uh, I don't really know. It does work, though. It does work. It's just it's a little jarring when you're used to them performing in a certain style on all their other albums. But it's actually really cool for those of you that don't really like Doom or Stoner much. This is the one that I would recommend to you right off the bat, because this is completely different. Uh, you got the Lonely Child, which is all instrumental, full of eerie synths and big bass lines. Uh, and the guitars are really clean and kind of like shimmering. I don't know another way how to say it, but, uh, and then you got, I fly among the stars, atmospheric prog, space rock, not far removed from classic Eloy. It's like, I'm listening to this. I'm like, holy shit, this sounds like, you know, other bands from that seventies era, but metal uh, like, era uh, Pink Floyd. Yeah. Big time, but not the seventies proto metal. This is almost like going in like proto prog, kraut rock and space rock sort of thing, which is kind of interesting. Uh, you got Unnaturally Strange, again, kind of weird, very Krautrock-ish. 
I Won't Leave You Rosie brings back some of this like kind of Hawkwind influences where there is a Hawkwind feel on a lot of these albums. Think of like the more the early mid 70s, the heavier Hawkwind. That is all throughout this album as well. Uh, you got The World is Standing Still uh, kind of finishes up the first uh, half of the album. It's kind of like this whole suite. And that totally sounds like, you know, Obscure by Clouds, Pink Floyd, Metal, that sort of thing. So really cool. Uh, you got Eternal Light, Straight Prog Rock as is a peculiar reality, which is like, you know, loads of synths on here. There's really not any heavy guitar in this album, which is really different. Uh, and then you got Everything is Changing, The Flat Earth Theory, and Black Spring Rising, Black Spring Rising, all really mellow, not really big on any of those songs. Uh, they're kind of spacey. They just kind of are there. Uh, for me, I prefer the first half of the album, the big long suite that starts it off with. I really like that a lot. The second half of the album for me kind of loses a little bit, but uh, I'm still not sure how I feel about this. I like it. I don't know if I like it as a cadaver album. Uh, I'm missing the heavy guitars, but I think it's really cool. Um, it's really different. Give them credit for doing it. Whether we see them going through with this style on future releases, I don't know. You know, the Eldevar thing is certainly similar to this. I think that works a little bit better than this, actually. But uh, it's still really well done. Uh, and like I said, uh, is it a one-off? I don't know. We'll see. But that's my number six, the isolation tapes. Does yours come with the live CD? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was really hard to get that album when it first came out. I know. It's it's available now. Yeah, for like a year, yeah. I, I looked for this. It was like so I spent $70 on the vinyl to get it. Wow. And and then like two months later, it was in my local record store for like 25, 30 bucks. And I was like, God damn it. And now I didn't even get the live CD with mine. And the live CD comes with all the vinyl now. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. But my vinyl's white. Oh, there you go. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> so will I rebuy it for that live CD? Yeah, I'll be showing that on the curses. Uh, Curse of the Collector, I'm sure. <laughs> Speaking of... <laughs> bullshit like that so my number five is abra cadaver which is an awful album title i think because it's very jokey and their music doesn't sound jokey their nicknames are a little jokey and abra cadaver is kind of but it's still a great album but here's the story pete so i have a 400 disc disc changer downstairs in my bar and how do i know what disc is where I have this big folder with the sleeves in there with a number to each sleeve that goes with the number slot in the CD. And what do I do with the cases? I have them stacked right over there in the same order. So if I ever change them out, I take out the booklet, put it in the case. That's my system. So I was looking for this CD jewel case and I can't find it. I, I searched this house inside and out. I had sleepless nights over this stupid jewel case. But I don't think it, the jewel or the uh, digi pack came with the little booklet sleeve because what I did, or if they if if it did come with one, it was too big to slide in here. So I printed off. Okay, there you go. For some reason I printed off the cover so I had something to slide in there, and that's all I got now. Is this and this to represent the live album that came with it? So did I rebuy it? Just to get my digi pack back? Hell yes, I did. <laughs> Hell yes. That was bothering me too much. So here's the CDs. It comes with the live album, comes with the studio album. And it's good. It's real good. But I'll have a couple reasons why it comes in at number five. Like, come back to life. Cool riff. What else is new with this band? Uh, a lot of their songs have cool riffs. But here's the thing. Um, it's off-putting to me when the, the guitarist and the singer are doing the same exact part at the same time. Like the singer is singing the guitar line or the guitar line is doing the singer line. It's almost like twin guitars, but one guy's singing it. It's jarring to me for some reason. If you don't know what I'm talking about, pull out your copy of Book of Souls, by Iron Maiden, a lot of you have that. And listen to the beginning of the Red and Black. Uh, Bruce Dickinson and whoever's playing guitar is doing the same part. And it's, my ears don't like that much. But here it's not awful because it does have a badass breakdown and a nice guitar solo at the end. Doomsday Machine, which is a great, great 
song title almost sounds like a monster magnet song when you hear doomsday machine uh beginning has that great riff that if they play that in a small club it's going to get the club jumping the devil horns are going to start coming out so i man i had a chance to see these guys live in 2015 they were playing in Pittsburgh and I was in Pittsburgh that weekend, but I went to a pirates game and I think it was a one o'clock game and they weren't starting until 10 that night. Oh uh, yeah. And I was having beers at the pirates game and then on the, on the boat drinking <laughs> beers and yeah, it wasn't in the cards, but I kicked myself all the time. I could have saw a cadaver in a small little upstairs club. <clears throat> um, Demon alcohol, Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> sang it and had it right. Um, I have the storm banger comes on strong. Doesn't let up black snake though. Here we go back to that jarring guitar vocalist doing the same line uh, again. And it's in and out, in and out the whole song to the point where part of me wants to skip that song. So, but that's just my ears. That's not going to bother most people. Dust for me bounces back fire. It's almost like a made-up hit. This band doesn't have hits, obviously. But if if they did make a best of, or if there are fan favorites when it comes to songs, I have a feeling Fire would be in that mix. Even though they do the cardinal sin, Pete, of rhyming fire, desire, and then throwing in higher. They're not here's the normal ones, but yeah. yeah. Here's my rule with that. You're allowed to do it, you get it, I don't know, prior to 1988, you're grandfathered in. If you're still rhyming fire, desire, and higher after 88, it's cliche, it's overdone. You know, it's kind of like a uh, girl and world and had a notion to jump in the ocean. You're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> okay. But the song is so good that it's forgiven. Uh, Liquid Dream is cool. Rhythm of the Endless Minds. Very psychedelic, very trippy song. You can tell by the uh, album title. Abra Cadabra, Cadabra with a K. Corny, probably the, I guess you would call that the title track. It's solid song. And The Man I Shot is pretty solid too. Coming in at number five though. Still a great album. If this is where you start off listening, I, uh, you know, no argument here. More on that later. <clears throat> All right, my number five, I'm going to go to 2019's For the Dead Travel Fast, their fifth album. You know, the band at this point is uh, they're starting to add more and more psych to their music, which I, I guess when you listen to this album and then you listen to Isolation Tapes, maybe you can kind of see the trajectory, maybe, maybe not. But this is still a fairly heavy album. Uh, a lot of like horror film elements i think to the lyrics on this album which and i really the song like titles. yeah the song title the cover look at that cover yeah i mean if you look at look at the look at the back this looks like an uncle ass and the deadbeats uh back album cover and and the song titles remind me of like uncle ass and the deadbeats and so uh, there's you know a lot of similarities i think to both bands and uh yeah the covers just they look just so badass on there um and there, this is on the Nuclear Blast Records, by the way. Uh, but I really like the horror element thing because I'm, I'm a horror movie fan, as you know, as everybody knows. And to me, when bands are also into that and inject that into their song titles and lyrics, I'm all on board. Uh, the End and The Devil's Master start off the album in really creepy fashion. Um, Evil Forces is a great hard driving, just plain rock song. Children of the Night is dark, creepy. Uh, Dancing with the Dead reminds me of early alice cooper like thinking like you know killer and uh, billion dollar babies and you know those early alice cooper group albums really really like it a lot uh, it's got a dark kind of gothic hard rock feel which I, really resonates with me uh poison is faster paced still pretty heavy uh you got uh wah wah guitars and big heavy riffs on the great doomy demons in my mind again another great song title really and great. oddly enough poison does not remind you of Alice Cooper. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> it does not. Um, Demons in My Mind is probably my favorite song on here. Uh, and you got Saturnalis, which is this like kind of like somber, kind of re psychedelic, reminds me of like uh, like the second cousin to like Black Sabbath's Planet Caravan. If you like that sort of thing, really, really cool. And then uh, Long Forgotten Song is the, uh, the last track, and it's this big, doomy, 
you know, epic kind of thing. Um, I think it's a really strong album. Something's got to come in at number five. Uh, I can't really say anything bad about this album. Um, maybe it's not quite as heavy as some of the early ones, but it's still pretty heavy, I think. But it's really kind of like eerie and psychedelic and spooky. I think they were really going for that kind of vibe here. So also, also if you like like early 70s Alice Cooper, uh, I think you'll really dig this album. So that is my number five for The Dead Travel Fast from 2019. All right. Well, our lists are going to be totally different. And that's, yeah, I see that. And that's cool. <laughs> I think they're almost in reverse. That's all right. We'll meet in the middle yep. and then move on. <laughs> I'm going number four. I'm going with the debut. A lot of times a band like this, their debut comes in last, you know, like they're still trying to find their sound. This band came on pretty strong right off. Oh yeah. Right off the beat. Um, six songs, 35 minutes. You're in, you're out. You got your ass rocked. You're done. <laughs> Love that. Uh, all Rocket our thoughts. Does. Yeah. Uh, straight ahead rocker. These, these guys have great solos in their songs too. Even if when they have fuzz, the solo will come in and it'll be like clean sounding. Yeah. It's kind of balance shit out. Yeah, Black their, stuff, their stuff is not overly distorted or fuzzy. No. There, there is plenty of it, but this yeah. is, you know, there are other bands that come across sounding way heavier because they use a lot more fuzz and distortion. I mean, these guys are like, you know, orange amps, minimal amount of fuzz, wah wahs. That's it. Really, yeah. nothing else there. And it's this ain't well. early Mastodon. No, at all. No. So don't be off put or don't be scared. You know, oh, they're going to be too whatever. Nah, you'll love them. I promise you'll love them. Uh, Black Sun, it kind of shows that, you know, they're a bit more of a, just a stoner rock band right off the debut. You know, they're not a one trick pony. Forgotten Past, maybe the most primitive sounding song on the album. That's fine. Uh, Goddess of Dawn, got a nice moving groove creatures of the demon ah this is a really cool song it's not slow creepy it rocks but it's still kind of creepy at the same time it's got in, in the guitars i don't know how they're doing it but they're making like these cool noises and sound effects with the guitar like ting ting type stuff uh and then the, the bass riffs are like thundering it's almost uh, you know gives you the, the feeling of like a creature running amok a big creature running amok so yeah that is my favorite song on there then purple sage <laughs> that's hawkwind like that song and it's cool that they're doing this right off the you know on the debut too and it actually starts off sounding like a creature feature from the 1950s with a type stuff so yeah number four going into this exercise i was thinking this might be a little lower but no i'm putting it four great album yeah. nothing wrong with it even though it's at number four yeah i mean there's really nothing wrong with any of these albums uh in my opinion uh i'm gonna go number four 2017's rough times here they are looking all sorts of 70s there i guess <laughs> they, they were they were really interesting look to them too they kind of look like hippies sort yeah. of not you know it's like my one complaint is it looks like they wash their hair just a little too often i wish they yeah. would wash their hair less less it needs to be look a little greasier i guess yeah <laughs> uh good album I, I echo everything jamie said about this album uh I, I love the title track i think uh the title track kind of reminds me of like their first two albums i think um into the wormhole crushing stoner doom classic uh, the, the guitars and bass are just huge on this particular. I, that's one thing I also like about this band. You always hear the bass player. He's big and fat in the mix. Love that. Uh, Skeleton Blues crushes. Die, baby, die. Terrific. Fast paced, hard rocker. It's catchy. It's infectious. Really, really good. Uh, vampires add some more of that kind of creepiness that they do on all these albums. Uh, tribulation nation see you can't say it you got to sing it yeah it's really really good and again it reminds me of like kind of catchy bubbly psychedelic hard rock and hawkwind and i'm a big hawkwind fan so i really dig that a lot uh world of evil excellent like 70s style proto metal heavy rock um I agree with you. I think the back half of the album lose or the back quarter of the album lose a little bit of steam but I think uh, the first half of it is just so strong that uh, that's why I rank this where I do. I, that's why, again, another one of those instances where 
an album for me ranks a little higher because a portion of the album is so damn strong that I can overlook, you know, the last three or four songs, which aren't fantastic. They're not terrible, but everything before that is just, just kills. So that's number four for me. Rough times. All right. Number three, this is uh 2015 Berlin. This is the first album I bought by these guys the day it came out. I had the two previous, bought that. I think I bought bought Abracadaver maybe a year after its release. So I was excited for this one. New release, yes, new cadaver. And it's the first time, wouldn't be the last time, but it was the first time I bought something on CD and vinyl. And I remember going, Laszlo, what are you doing? But it just <laughs> seemed right. <laughs> I'm doing that less. No, I'm not. I just did that with uh, Megadeth, bought on CD and vinyl, the new album. Don't listen to me. I'm still doing it. But yes, this is a great album. Uh, Lord's of, Lord of the Sky starts it off. Great. Great ass kicker right off the bat. Last Living Dinosaur. You know, this is a, more of a cleaner sounding album for them. A yeah. little less fuzz. But Last Living Dinosaur still has some of that fuzz. But if you're not a big fuzz guy, I think you're going to still find something in that song and this album and this band overall to like uh all great thousand miles away from home filthy illusion pale blue eyes but then something happens pete around track number six the songs get a little bit more accessible a little bit more clean sounding with bigger hooks and i read i remember reading seven years ago when this came out seven years i know yeah, right um that they did that on purpose. I can't remember why they did it, but they put all like the more accessible stuff in the back half. Uh, Stolen Dreams, huge sing-along hook, a song that my wife could dig if I was playing it with her. Uh, the Old Man, The Old Man, probably my favorite guitar riff of the last 20 years. I was sending, it actually started almost a little bit of buzz for this band. Just a little bit of buzz. A one year, one beer buzz. <laughs> Just a little buzz. Uh, they made a video for it that looked professionally done. I was sending the video to my friends, you know, and dig this. Listen to this. You're going to dig it. I remember my buddy in Florida texts back. He goes, dude, that's great. It's like new, but old. I'm like, exactly, dude. Uh, if you like just any style of hard rock music, you're going to love the old man. Uh, Spanish Wild Rose. More of that accessible, cleaner stuff on the side, too, that is really great. Uh, See the World with Your Own Eyes almost has like a 90s alt rock feel to it. But it, it's not Pearl Jam. It's not Stone Temple Pilots, so don't worry. But it has a little bit of that feel to it. Into the Night. Now, that's a put the top down and drive on a, on a nice 78 degree summer night. Uh, that has elements of new wave of British heavy metal in it. Yeah, it's got a little punkiness to it, I think. Yeah, a little punkiness to it. Almost, yeah, a little early Maiden, maybe. Um, and then the bonus track, which is something in German, I don't know. Uh, they say it's a bonus track, but it's on the CD and it's on the vinyl. So I don't know. Maybe it's not on the download. I don't know. But it's one of those little Happy Trails fade out songs. I don't judge the album on those. So I was excited when it came out. I was excited when I was listening to it. I love it to death. As Martin Popoff would say, it's uh, number three, though. Number three. Yep. Well, we've, uh, for the first time today, we have met. So it's also my number three. I told you we'd meet in the middle. Yep, we absolutely did. So, uh, yeah, I, I would agree. This is a really strong album. I, I remember when it first came out, though, I was kind of a little like, oh, I don't know if I like that as much as the first two. And I think I, I, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know. I still don't like it as much as the first two, but I like it a lot. I like it. Uh, and all the things you said, I think uh, it, there's some great songs on here. Lord of the Sky is terrific. I also get a little bit of uh, Wolf Mother in spots on this album, as well. Again, the early Alice Cooper group. I think that uh, one of the things that this, and I would love to hear from them directly, but I wonder if they're into uh, that whole period of Alice Cooper, like, you know, 72 to 75, uh, because I get a lot of that in this music and especially on this album. But uh, yeah, I mean, Thousand Miles Away from Home, uh, Filthy Illusion, Pale Blue Eyes, the old man is terrific. 
circles in my mind. It's just a really, really good, and it's a great sounding album. It's very analogy, which I like quite a bit. It just kind of, I love what you said about how it's old sounding, great new music. And that's exactly what these guys are. They just, well, my buddy Rob Spawn, let's give him credit for that one. <laughs> yeah, Rob, full credit to you. I think that's a great like interpretation of their music. It's like it, you listen to it and you're like, oh, it sounds like something from 73, but yet it sounds like something from today. It's like they, they've done a, a great job of making modern music sound vintage, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, I like this album a lot. Great songs. And, and I, I will say, um, don't be put off, like Jamie said, with stoner, doom and fuzz and all that sort of thing, because these guys don't go overload with it. If you love psychedelic wah-wah guitar solos, man, they're all over this album. I mean, he's a really good player. And uh, oh, yeah, that's great album. Number three, Berlin. If Yeah, we were talking about how it's hard to listen to all these bands that we love because we have so much music. If this was 1993, seven and i had a lot less music i'd be listening to these guys all the time every other day all the damn all the time, time. Right? all the damn time <laughs> yes i just have too much i was trying to think today when i was getting ready this morning when did i acquire almost too much music i was i was putting it around 2009 2010 i think is when it happened i keep buying it yeah, I think it's for me, it's getting worse, though, over the last couple of years, especially since yeah. COVID started, I think, because I think I've been buying more because I've been doing less. Um, and now, you know, with the attention on the channel, my people are sending shit constantly. So it's like, you know, and there's, you know, now it's like we, we, we do such a, uh, I think, a really good job of doing these like new release reviews that like. I almost feel compelled that you got to get all the notable stuff you got to get in. You got to review on the channel. Never mind how much we, how much more we review on the website. So there's this challenge to always be on top of all the new stuff coming out, not just to review, but just to have and to yeah. enjoy. Right. And to keep up with all the stuff that you really like that you haven't gotten to, like yeah. you said. The old, years. And then you got your old favorites. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. God, it's, it's yes. And, and people ask or probably wonder, how do these guys find the time to listen to all this music and watch all these movies? I don't fucking know. It's not I easy. <laughs> I tell you what, I love an album like, I don't know, Super Tramp, Crime in the Century, one of my top 10 albums ever. How yeah. often do I listen to it these days? You know, like who said it on the prog seat? The album's always playing in your head anyways. Right. So it's not like you got to pull it out weekly and listen to it anyways. But you want so, to. Yeah. Yeah. I well, wish you could. <laughs> All right. Anyways, back to Cadaver. Your number six is coming in to number two for me. Wow. I texted you a couple uh, days ago in the morning when I was listening to it. And I said, Isolations Tapes is damn good. And you text back something like, eh, <laughs> it's okay. I need to listen to it more or something. <laughs> it, Pete, he said in Pete fashion, eh, it kind of sucks. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, number two for me, it's, uh, you know, I love the five tracks on side one, how it works together as part one through five. Side two is separate, almost like side two of uh, 2112, where it's separate songs, but it has the same exact feel as side one. And I'm not going to go track by track on this album because it needs to be listened to as a, whole album you need to absorb it front to back and here's the thing it, it does sound like especially on side one it's pink floyd metal at times um i remember when i bought this in 2020 for 70 goddamn dollars and i put it on the turntable it was late on a saturday night and um look i listen to music normally when i'm working or on a saturday night and I, it's not fun to talk about when I listen to music while I'm working because that's boring time listening to music. But on Saturday night, I don't stay up late much anymore, Pete, on Saturday nights. I used to stay up to like midnight or one o'clock. Um, but it was probably midnight when I was listening to it. And I remember about 10 or 15 minutes into the album, I'm like, what the hell did I put on again? What is this? Oh, yeah, Doesn't sound familiar. I was like, what Pink Floyd album did I put on? Oh, it's Cadaver. God damn it. That's right. Um it, it, there are times on a lot of times but there's big empty spaces in the music it's almost like the notes are light hydrogen 
sorry, like helium almost floating in your room. Your big spaces between the notes and can almost grab the notes. And then the, the notes might come together just a little bit for a moment and get condensed and rock you for a bit and then separate again. This is a pothead's dream record. If you like, you know, smoking pot, you need to buy this now that, it, you know, you can get it for like 20 bucks on CD now and get the live CD. So if you buy this, you almost get both sides of the band. You'll get the live CD with all the rock and stuff. And then you'll get uh, the spacey one that they, you know, the isolation tapes, it, they did it during the pandemic. So they were isolated. But here's the thing. Is it a one-time thing or is this the direction they're going? Is it like the new Blood Incantation record? which I listened to one and a half times and I was done with it. Whereas just moody music, you know, Blood Incantation's next album is going to be death metal again. You just know it. <laughs> These guys though, I'm not in their headspace, So I don't know if this is what they're going to stay with. Maybe they'll rock out just a little bit more, but keep this vibe still kind of like the one they did with Elder. Or I, I don't think they're going back to this anytime probably, soon probably not i don't think i so. think they've moved on but i do think they'll turn up the guitar again probably on the as soon as the next record uh it's interesting to see but you know if you're going to change your sound for me sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you know I'm playing about the sword these days how they change their sound a little bit which is basically the same type of music they just rock a little less but this works for me 100 percent, 110 percent. so there you go number two my number two is the debut cadaver wow yeah okay, back there kicking ass um heavy stuff if you love stoner rock this is stoner bliss I but mean, not that heavy at the same time not crazy heavy not crazy heavy but you know it's it, uh, i'll put it to you this way if you like uh like black sabbath master reality type stoner heaviness that's what you get here but a little more bluesiness i think these guys always have like a, this kind of bluesy psychedelic thing which is all throughout their music um all our thoughts and black sun both just crush to start the album off um and I mean, to me, it sounds like these guys are playing, you know, their orange amps on 11 and it, but it's just perfect kind of analogy, fuzzy, but not overly. So, um, forgotten past also nice and heavy, a lot of groove, um, reminds me some of this album reminds me of late sixties, grand funk railroad on steroids because grand funk railroad also never were really big on a lot of fuzz and a lot of distortion in their music. They, their, their guitar, Mark Farner's guitar sound was always kind of somewhat clean with just a little bit of overdrive. It sounded heavier than it actually was. Although Mel's bass was always, you know, big and throbbing. And that's, that's kind of how I hear these guys. It's, it sounds heavier than it actually is. Uh, just based on the way they arrange things and, and the tones that they use. Really, really good. Um, I also get a little bit of uh, late 70s, early 80s pentagram on this one and the second album, which again, pentagram, always, you know, doom band, but yet never as heavy as like St. Vitus or Black Sabbath. They kind of were a little more bluesy and some of their guitar tone on some of their albums, a little cleaner sounding. Goddess of Dawn, faster paced song. I love the Black Sabbath influence on this one. Uh, Creature of the Demon, just great bluesy doom. Just great really, title. <laughs> yeah, just absolutely love it. Uh, heavy riffs, wah-wah guitars, um, just great stuff. Purple, Purple Sage is one of the longer songs on here. It's kind of got this like psychedelicness to it, which uh, again, reminds me of Hawkwind mixed with a little Sabbath. Um, just uh, great, great stuff. I, I really like this album a lot. Um, just a great debut album for me. I wish it was longer, but like Jamie said, it's compact and it's short and sweet and uh it's great so yeah that is my number it's, two. Like, it's like a nooner on your lunch break you're in you're out you're out that's <laughs> get it back, that's get back get back to work like, wow that was great but time to go back to work yep. <laughs> um all right my number one i love traditions pete even when i make them up i think i said that before on this channel 
And last few years, my tradition is to listen to, uh, I always forget the name of the title because it has one of those weird titles, For the Dead Travel Fast. On the first day of fall, every year I bust this out because this is my fall. This is actually like a, I listen to this band more in the fall than any other time when I do listen to them. You know, I don't listen to Cadaver out by the pool. That's AOR time. Yeah. Uh, Journey, Foreigner, put in some Van Halen. Fall, Cadaver. So, yeah, I love this record. Um, it's kind of like, you know, they all, they, they have a cult themes throughout their record. But I feel like this is the only one I would call a full-blown occult rock record. Um, so it, the end comes in and it's got a creepy little intro that builds into the devil's master. And that has big thunderous riffs. It's well-written, simple song, but with complex arrangements, you know, played simply, but with complex arrangements. Uh, Christoph Lindman's vocals, or what does he like to be called? Lupus? Lupus. Lup lupus. Um, his vocals on that song sound like if October had a voice. I always said that Sammy Hagar always sounds like if Summer had a voice to me. His voice sounds like if October could sing, it would sound like him. Then we get into Evil Forces. Man, oh man, great crutch, uh, catchy riff. It pulls you in instantly. And uh, the way Christoph sings is almost like, like it doesn't exist, but it should exist. A cult R&B. So something like this, which is uh, Mr. Stevie Wonder there, if, if he was into Satan. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't know what he's wearing half the time anyways. <laughs> Go look at him in the 80s on YouTube, if, if he dressed himself. Um, so yeah, it has that kind of feel. It's got an R&B feel, but an evil feel. Then Children of the Night. Uh, old, great old school sounding title too like it came should be on a sabbath album or something uh epic build up uh goes into a big kick-ass song and he here's the thing it's it's got elements that if you're into like other styles of hard rock or metal you're gonna love this if you're into 80s hair bands or something you're gonna find something to like here i do believe rich catino would love this song and he would find a lot of things to love in this album. In fact, I think I got a picture of Rich with the album. Uh, do we got? There he is. <laughs> he sent me this a few days ago. He texted that to me. He wanted me to know that he gives this album <laughs> the thumbs up. And I, the first thing I said is, Rich, you wear blue shirts like that. <laughs> and he goes, Shh, don't tell anyone. Well. <laughs> Luckily, there's only going to be about 37 people watching this video anyways. <laughs> so don't worry about it, Rich. <laughs> people are going to go, cadaver with a K. Uh, what else has Pete got on the menu? <laughs> so don't worry about it, Rich. It's just a few of us. Uh, the secret too, is safe with us. Too I made that up. That's not real, guys. That's not real at all. He did not send that to me. But he would give it the thumbs up, I think. So, Rich, if you're watching, listen to this album. And then maybe I'll get a real one like that. There you go. <laughs> um, then we get uh, Dancing with the Dead. Lighter, groovier song. You know, you just rocked us for three songs in a row uh, with an intro. Uh, it is placed perfectly on this album. Time to come down a little bit. Uh, it's kind of like if, if Satanic people were hooking up and making out. So this would be their makeout song, as you can see. Uh, they were they were at the satanic ritual and they found each other and let's, let's go to my car for just a second and they got the sticker in the window so yeah that's the satanic people uh make out song then comes poison ah uh, great great song to me it reminds me of 60s psychedelic rock mixed with new wave of british heavy metal so think Strawberry Alarm Clock, if Eddie from Iron Maiden was every single member in Strawberry Alarm Clock. That's what, in a fictional world, because we know Eddie ain't real. But <laughs> this is what that song sounds like to me. Uh, Demons in My Mind. Uh, more of that 60s psychedelic feel. It's uh, it's probably, it, but it kicks ass. It's that part of the ritual when the bonfire is going, everybody's kicking it, everybody's having fun. The band's in the background playing this song. Perfect setting. Uh, 
set you nail. It's it's real slow in the context of this album. It works. You know, you need the song before and the song after it for it to really work as a song by itself. Yeah, it's OK, but it does remind me of like a slower kink song if the kinks were in to devil worshiping. So I, if you can't see it, they got their little devil worshiping <laughs> necklaces on and a picture of a goat there in the back. This really? this is the lobby before they go into the main devil worshiping room. So they're just <laughs> on the lobby. Uh, then you go into uh, where am I? That was the kinks. Long forgotten song, almost eight minutes long. Yeah. This has everything I love about the band. It's got groove, it's spookiness, it's got the pounding riffs, it's got atmosphere. But at the same time, when you listen to it, you know it's just three guys. You know it's three guys doing a lot, but you still know it's three guys. So it's almost like it's easy top from the 70s. Stop doing the Southern rock a little bit, threw away the blues, and kind of did a cult rock. So think of ZZ Top as a cult rock. And if you can't see, there's the Exorcist thing. And this is their DVD live from hell. I should have <laughs> finished with Rich. <laughs> I should have finished with Rich. <laughs> but <laughs> that's how that song sounds. So, yes, I love this album to death. And it's my favorite. And I've been listening to it. This one has been on rotation all week, actually. And I think... <laughs> And the first day of fall is right around the corner, and I know I'll be listening to it then. So it's stuck in that rotation wheel for me, which is a good thing. See, albums, even my 50s, they may not get into my DNA like when I was 12, but they creep in a little bit sometimes if, yes. if you let them and if you have time. Well, that's the key, if you let them, right? Because there's plenty of good new shit out there. As yes, we yes. You're always moving on more. to the next shiny object. Yeah, there you go. One thing I do want to mention, because I was just kind of looking over these, uh, and Stephen Reed, if you're watching, this will make you happy. Uh, they have the same band logo on every album. Ah, they yes, kept they that do. consistently all the way from the beginning, which I think is a really great thing. And it's uh, you know, even that, when they change their sound, they even when they change logo. their sound. Yeah. I mean, although this is a little different, but it's kind of kind of sort of the same. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell what that is, really. But yeah, no, it's it's in there. Yeah. Um, so that's a really good thing. So, um, yeah, something to be said about that consistency. Yeah. Uh, my number one is Abracadaver. I agree, it's not a great title of an album, but this is a banging album. Love this. Um, I, I find this album a little bit more melodic than the debut, but the guitar tones, the reliance on just cool, you know, doomy, bluesy, psychedelic riffing, I think, continues here. Um, comeback life. Got tons of groove. I, I could bring it back the Grand Funk Railroad thing again. I think this album carries a lot of that over from the debut. Uh, Doomsday Machine cranks. Love the screaming wah wah guitars on this album, man. Because I'm a sucker for that. I'm a complete sucker for that. And uh, you know, Mr. Lupus, he just does a great job on that. Uh, Eye of the Storm, another banger. Black Snake, bluesy stoner gem. Uh, the vocals are top notch on that song. Uh, Dust is another kind of 70s throwback kind of proto metal hard rock type of thing but plenty of bluesy feel to it uh fire kicks ass liquid dream is so anthemic um rhythm for endless minds again reminds me of hawkwind the psychedelic title track the uh crushing closer the man i shot man i just love this album i loved it back then i love it today i remember you know when the first album came out i don't think i got that like immediately but i got it a few months after it came out and i was like totally totally into it and then you blinked and this came out and this was uh, on their debut on nuclear blast so i remember like in the span of like you know six or eight months i think i got both first two cadaver albums and i was like these guys are absolutely amazing and you know then you know not too long after we had berlin and they've been fairly consistent up until you know recent years but uh yeah a great band i mean i think that should be everybody's takeaway here that uh, you can really start anywhere in this catalog um and find something to love i, yeah. I would say you know as we've said this is probably the out of the all of them this is the one that's the most different in sound and style but these are very, very 
they don't sound the same, but they follow kind of a similar path. But you can definitely hear their trajectory from the first album to the most recent kind of how they've gone along. And they, they, they start to get a little more accessible. They start to utilize right. more space rock and prog and psychedelia. But um, yeah, it's a great band. Really yeah. good. Deserve to be more well known. Yeah, um, I think we're doing a good job of selling this band to the 37 people watching. And look, look at our joy of finding a newer band and following them on their musical journey and going with the flow. If you're not into, if you're not listening to newer bands, you're missing out on that. If you're sitting there still waiting for the next Foreigner album and going, I bought the new Foreigner, I still buy new music, eh, foul, no. Find a newer band that you dig, maybe this one, and go with the journey, man. Who cares if you're 60 and they're 28? Oh, what are those 28-year-olds? No, They know how to make good music, first off. So, yeah, we need young bands with a younger spirit and, you know, that fire for rock and roll and for proving themselves. Foreigner has nothing to prove. There's no, there's no original members left anyways i'm just using them as an example i don't even know if they will release another album yeah, I, I heard that they might be so yeah, yeah they're working great on i can't wait to hear it um so yeah that's all i got to, i'm off the soapbox i'm sorry no but i totally agree with you uh and i think what's great about these guys uh and, and one of the things that i just never understand is like they they appreciate the classic music and they're playing their own music that gives the nod to that, but it's still kind of modern sounding. So I think like if, you know, we mentioned a lot of other bands tonight, we mentioned Hawkwind and Black Sabbath and Grand Funk Railroad and Pentagram and all, all this other stuff. If you like any of those bands and you like their classic stuff, give these guys a shot because they like it too. And they're doing their own interpretation of that and adding new elements to it. Yes. So I think I, and remember all that music that you listened to from 1975 and 1982, that was made by younger people too. They were 28 too at the time and you're still listening to them. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that George Lemay once said that is very, very true. Uh, when you were growing up, all of us, when we were growing up and listening to, zeppelin and sabbath and maiden and priest and you know grateful dead you know foreigner during whoever we were listening to and fell in love with those bands were all new to you at that time so there's no reason why you can't find a band today even though we're all a lot older that is new to you today that will be your favorite six months from now you just found manassas that's right. 40 years ago 50 years ago yeah 50 years ago jesus yeah. christ yeah. So I, you know, I discover new stuff all the time. And that's, that's what being, you know, a music fan is, is being open minded to say, I'll give something a chance. And I know it's hard these yeah. days because I think to a lot of people, um, music is a commodity. And it's like, you know, if it doesn't grab you in the first minute of the song, you know, I mean, I, I see so many people who comment uh, here that like, uh, you know, like last month, I, I did all the, the new you know, bands of the 21st century. And I, there were a bunch of people who were like, yeah, I didn't really like any of the bands that, that you recommended. I, I listened to all of them at least once. I'm like, well, what did you listen to? A song? A half an album? Did you just like quickly stream it on YouTube? 30 seconds or... of one song. Right, and that's, that's, not, that's not really giving it a chance. I mean, I know there's a lot of music, but like, you know, when we were younger, we gave all the bands that we still love today, we gave them a lot of chance. A lot of because chance. we had no money to buy another record. We were stuck with the one we had. Right. We're going to like this, God damn it. Because I might not be able to buy another cassette for another four weeks. Yeah. And then it grew on you. We gave it a chance to grow yeah. on us. So yeah. look, and being open-minded to me <clears throat> is not liking everything. It's giving everything a shot, at least. Yeah. That's what open-mindedness is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I, I see people talk about how, you know, we're all getting older and I don't have all the time that I used to. And I trust me, like I get all that uh but it, you know to uh, what i really what i really disagree with is when people say there is no good new music being made and they've been saying it for 30 years that's where people are wrong because you're not giving anything a chance you're just assuming that you know because you don't bother to go out and try and listen to anything new that everything sucks and, and how do you know there's no good music if right and you can't judge by what's being you know who's playing on the award show and what's on uh you know all that popular crap that you know that that's that's not what we're talking about here there's lots of new great bands that don't 
get played on radio, satellite or regular radio that aren't uh, featured on videos on, God, does MTV even play videos anymore? Wherever uh, they don't get, you know, they're not like number 10 on Spotify and all that sort of thing. There's a lot of bands that aren't like in the spotlight. That's what's being force fed us, right? That's for general consumption. There's tons of other great bands that like are just struggling to survive and are trying to appeal to people who enjoyed the bands that inspired them. And that's all of us. So, yep. So there right. you have it, everybody. Ranking the albums of Cadaver. Go check them out. They're dynamite, each and every one of them in their own way. So uh, if you are already a fan, rank them as you like them in the comments below. If you've never listened to them, I think you have lots of excellent picks here. So we've, uh, I think, greatly described all these albums. And uh, go check out the one that sounds the most appealing to you and let us know what you think. So uh, and while you're at it, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Stay tuned. Uh, we got the Hudson Valley Squares coming up tomorrow, uh, but a week from today, Mr. Rick Labonte will be joining me for a ranking the album show of blues rock guitar phenomenon, Joe Bonamassa. That's coming up. That's another one we've been promising you for quite a long time. That's happening a week from today, next Sunday here on ranking the album. So uh, be sure to tune in for that for Jamie Lazlo and Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching everybody. Enjoy the red and Rich Catino as well, who didn't even know he was joining us today, but there he is. <laughs> we'll see you real soon here on the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.